the hole. Down a winding pathway, about halfway through the woods, sat a weary traveller with a basket full of goods. She was off to visit Vera, her cousin from the west, and had sat herself upon a rock to have a little rest. After eating up her cupcake and drinking all her tea, she stood to stretch her weary legs then stopped most suddenly. For on the ground in front of her, in the middle of the track, was a hole that dropped quite quickly. It was deep and wide and black. Well, this is odd, the squirrel mused. A hole right in my path. I wonder what lives down there, down that steep and blackened shaft. She stuck her foot into the hole, then lowered herself down. Hanging tightly to the edge, she tried to touch the ground. Oh no, I'm stuck, the squirrel yelled. There seems no floor at all. She swung her feet from side to side, but could not grip the wall. So squirrel hung there nervously, hoping not to wake the beast that surely lived down deep below, just waiting for a feast. Then... Down the winding pathway, about halfway through the woods, pranced a friendly ostrich with a basket full of goods. He was off to visit Douglas, his brother from the east, when he heard a cry so desperate yell, Please save me from the beast! Ostrich quickened up his pace until he came upon a deep dark hole beside his feet with Squirrel hanging on. A hole, the ostrich cried out loud. His curious eyes, they gleamed. Putting down his basket inside the hole, he leaned. I can't see anything down here, yelled the ostrich from below. It's far too dark. There is no light. I guess we'll never know. Ostrich turned and arched his neck and tried to stand up tall, but found his head was firmly wedged between squirrel and the wall. Both now stuck, the two new friends could do nothing more than wait and hope the monster down the hole did not have lunch till late. Then, down the winding pathway, but halfway through the woods, chattered three small monkeys with a basket full of goods. They were off to visit Doris, their auntie from the south, when they heard an ostrich yelling, I'm stuck in a monster's mouth. The monkeys scurried quickly towards the noisy scene. And there they found the deepest hole that they had ever seen. Without a word between them, they each linked tail to tail and jumped right down that big black hole to make a furry trail. We'll find out what is down there. Together we are long. We'll reach the very bottom. But it seemed that they were wrong. The monkeys hung there swaying. No further could they drop. They were nowhere near the bottom and a long way from the top. The hole that once lay empty was filling to the brim with the menagerie of wildlife who were feeling rather grim. Oh dear, cried the monkeys. What is our fate to be? What if the black hole monster serves us all up for his tea? Then...
down the winding pathway, about halfway through the woods, skipped a tiny field mouse with a basket full of goods. She was off to visit Norman, her uncle from the north, when she heard a monkey yelling, I dare you, monster, to come forth. The wee mouse, feeling curious, scampered to the edge and looked upon the animals all dangling from the ledge. Oh my, she squeaked, a great big hole. I know just what to do. She cupped her paws around her mouth and shouted down, No sooner did she say this than the words they came right back. A voice so big and scary from the hole so deep and black. You Oh no, cried all the animals. Is that the monster's roar? He must be coming closer. We'll be eaten up for sure. They all hung on more tightly as the ground began to rumble. Listen, said the field mouse, I can hear his tummy grumble. The panic that then followed created quite a din. If you don't stop, the field mouse warned, then you shall all fall in. And so the animals held their breath closed their eyes in fear as a terrifying scritch scratch and a snuffling sound drew near. Scritch, scratch, snuffle, snuffle. The animals all quivered. They had never been so scared. But as the monster reached the top, they all just stopped and stared. Hello, shrilled a little voice. I'm Mole. How do you do? It's so nice to have reached the top. You have such a lovely view. I've been wondering what was up here. I could hear you scream and squeal. From below, I thought some monsters were preparing for a meal. My hole can get quite lonely, but there's only little old me. I wonder. Are you free now? Could we share a cup of tea? And so the animals clambered back up into the woods. They spread a blanket on the ground and shared out all their goods. A feast they had between them, no monster to be found. They danced and ate and sang and laughed and all above the ground. Now the moral to this story is don't look down a hole unless your basket's full of goods. Fit to share with a mole.